Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Custom NPCs tutorial series for version 1.12.2. In this video, we will be going over all of the mod's items and their functions. I will have a list of time codes in the description so you can skip to an item you want to know more about. Some of the items here I will only give a brief overview of, as they will be covered more extensively in a future video. Without further ado, let's get right into it. The NPC Wand Right click on a block to create an NPC. If you right click the air, you will get a list of surrounding NPCs. You can click the name to select the NPC and manipulate it with the buttons on the right. Edit will open up the NPC editor. TP2 will teleport you to the NPC. Reset will return the NPC to their spawn point and put them in their neutral state. Reset all is the same as the reset button, but will affect all NPCs. So if you have an NPC running away at half health, you can reset them to make them normal. Freeze all will freeze all NPCs in the state that they are currently in. They will not speak, gain health, or move, even if they are in the air. Delete will delete the selected NPC. Mob Cloner This tool lets you save mobs, including NPCs, so that you can duplicate them elsewhere. All of the mobs' NVT data is saved, so if they have a custom name or potion effect, if you clone them, they will keep them. Right-click a block to bring up your clones list. At the top here, you have Clones, Entities, and Server. The Clones tab are clones that were saved to your .minecraft folder. These clones you can transfer between worlds, but only you can see them. The server tab shows you clones saved to the world folder. These clones can be seen by anyone on the server, and any commands that deal with clones will always look in the server clones. But these will only be available on this world. To move them, you would have to edit the world files. The entities tab will show you each mob in the game and any mobs from any mods you might have. Let's go to the client clones. Here are where the saved clones will show up. You can see that we have tabs here. These are just for organization. You get nine tabs, but there is no limit to how many clones can be in a tab. Up here we have a search bar. If you have a lot of clones, you can type the name here and it will narrow down the list. Click on a clone, and then on the right here we have spawn, which will create the clone on the block you selected. Remove, which will delete the clone from the list and Mob Spawner, which will create a spawner for that clone. To save a clone, right-click a mob to bring up the cloning menu. Here, you can edit the name of the clone. This isn't the name of the NPC or the mob, this is the name of the file. For example, if I clone this NPC named Bob and name the clone Jacobson, when I duplicate the NPC, it will still have the name Bob. Here you can select the tab that they will be saved into. And here you can toggle whether it is saved to your client or the server. Scripter This tool will bring up the scripting GUI for things that could be scripted when right clicked. Error and debug information will show up in this giant black box. Click copy to copy that to your clipboard. Click clear to get rid of it. Up here you toggle which scripting language you are using. Up here you toggle whether the script is enabled. If it is no, the script won't run. If it is yes, the script will run. Website will take you to the scripting page on the code development website, and so will API source. Form will take you to the Minecraft form page for custom NPCs. API doc will take you to the Java doc for custom NPCs. Click plus to create a new script tab. Here's where you type out your script. Press clear to get rid of it. Press copy to copy it to your clipboard. Click paste to paste it. Click load scripts and it will bring up the list of external scripts saved to world name, custom NPCs, scripts, ECMA script. Click on a script in Available Scripts. Click this button to load the script. If you want to unload the script, click on the name under Loaded Scripts. 
and click this button to unload it. This button here will load all available scripts, and this button here will unload every loaded script. Right click the air to edit scripts for players or for forge events. Pather. Right click an NPC to load them into the tool. Then right click on blocks to create a path for them to follow. You have to edit the NPC to make them follow the path. I will go over this in the AI tab video. When you right click a block or the air, it will bring up the list of saved coordinates. The NPC will walk to the coordinates in this order, top to bottom. You can click on a coordinate to select it, and then click up to move it up the list, down to move it down the list, or delete it from the list. Mounter. Right click any entity and it will bring up the clones list. Select a clone and click mount and it will mount the clone onto the entity. Or click player mount to mount yourself to the entity. Teleporter. Right click to bring up a list of Minecraft dimensions. Select and click teleport and it will transport you to that dimension. It seems to teleport you to the spawn chunks of that dimension. No matter where you teleport from, it will always place you at the same coordinate. Scripted door and block. These are a door and block that can be scripted respectively. When placed, they will bring up the scripting GUI, which you can then access again by right clicking the block with the scripter or NPC wand. If they are scripted to have a custom texture, holding up the scripter or wand will show its original texture. Soulstone. Right click an entity to store them inside the soulstone. Right click again to place them. It only has one use, then it is deleted. Scripted item. An item that could be scripted. Sneak and right click to open the scripting GUI. NBT book. Right click an entity to edit its NBT data. Click edit to open up the NBT data. And then click save to save the changes you've made. Redstone block. This block will emit a redstone signal if the player is in range. Here you can toggle if the range is detailed or not. A not detailed range will just check if the player is within the radius. Detailed range will check the range for each axis. For example, when not detailed, if I set the range for 5, if I'm outside the range of 5 blocks anywhere, it will stop emitting a redstone signal. With detailed, however, I can set it to turn off when I'm outside of its range by 5 blocks vertically, but 20 blocks horizontally. You can also set availability options and it will only emit a redstone signal if the player meets the requirements. I will talk about availability options in its own video. Carpentry Bench This block is used to craft custom recipes that can be defined in custom NPCs. At the time of making this video, however, this feature is broken. Mailbox Custom NPCs and players can write letters to other players. Those letters will show up in a mailbox. Right click the block to view all of your mail, which you can then select to read or delete. It's basically like an email. Location block. This is used for the location quest type. When placed, it will bring up this menu which can be brought up again by right-clicking the block with the wand. Here, you type the name of the location, which should match the name you defined in the quest. Here, you define the range from the block the player has to be in for the mod to count them as discovering it. Border Block 
This pushes the player back in the direction the arrow is facing if the player does not meet the availability options. Click this button to edit them. And here you can write a message for it to say when blocking the player. Here you define how many blocks up the border will affect. Copy block. When placed, it will bring up this menu. You can bring this menu up again by right clicking the block with the NPC wand. This block copies the block within the selection and saves it into a schematic or blueprint. You can define here how high, wide, and long the selection is. You can name it whatever you want here. Toggle this to save it as a blueprint or a schematic and click this button to copy the selection. This is used in tandem with the Builder block. When placed, it will bring up this menu, which can then be accessed again by right-clicking the block with the NPC wand. NPCs with the Builder job will automatically build the schematic one by one. Here you select the schematic you want to build. Click this to make a preview of the build. Click this to enable the build. NPCs will only build if it is enabled. Started tells you if the build has been started. This is toggleable. Finished tells you if the build is finished or not. This is also toggleable. If you set it to yes, the NPCs will stop building. Y offset. Offsets the schematic vertically by the amount you put here. Rotation will rotate the way the schematic is built by 90 degrees. Instant build. This button will immediately build it without having to have builder NPCs. Availability. You can set availability options here. This will make NPCs not build the schematic unless a player within range meets these options. Toggle start it to off if you decide to add this later. And those are all the items from the mod. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will be going over the display tab in the NPC editor.